Hello, and welcome to another Fan Mission Ghost walkthrough. So, I've decided to focus on the so-called Black Parade lore missions for the time being. With the Black Parade obviously being a fan mission campaign for Sif Gold, currently in development, and the lore missions are then the standalone releases by members of the development team that contain some tie-ins and references to the campaign in a single word, lore. And the point of all this is not to just run around showing you what exactly is a reference or what will become relevant in the campaign. Instead, I want to discuss the world building a bit and sort of give you an idea of what kind of mood and type of storytelling you could expect from the campaign. So the sound of a barrack in a room, which I played last time, is obviously one of these missions. But today we're gonna go a little bit back in time and play one of Skeki's earliest releases, Between These Dark Walls. There is no video briefing for this one, so let me read out the briefing text that comes with the mission's readme file. Things could potentially get messy tonight. I was on my way back home when some tough boys ambushed me. They weren't looking for money or anything, they just wanted to kill me right there in the street. Fortunately, I managed to run away unscathed, but these guys are still looking for me. I've managed to piece together something from rumors and hearsay. Turns out Massa Barrick, an usher I've done jobs for in the past, sold me out to Reputo, one of the city wardens, in order to prove that he'll be loyal and pay his tributes. Apparently, Barrick's business collapsed with the wall's demise, and now he seeks the protection of Reputo. Not to mention Barrick's business was run right under Reputo's nose, but he was protected by the wall at the time. In exchange for his good work, Barrick received a priceless necklace as a reward and keeps it stashed in his crumbling castle in Newmarket. Now it's time for some sweet revenge. I'm going to steal Barrack's necklace and humiliate him. That'll teach him never to double-cross me. I should also steal some valuables along the way, just to show Reputo how I deal with his reckless threats. Reputo doesn't like independence operating within his turf, so I'll make sure to plunder the neighborhood. I got to be careful, though. With the wall's downfall, the city became more dangerous than ever. Thugs and assassins are on the loose in the dark, and lawmen and hemorrhoids prowl the streets in search of heretics and criminals alike. Craig's cleft has never been so full. So we already have a few names mentioned here. Obviously Reputo and the Wall are two of the most powerful city wardens, uh, which are basically crime lords, and both of them get a mention in the uh, Dark Project, so you can learn more about them just by playing the main game. Another example of a warden would be then Lord Ramirez. And Mesa Beric is a new character, and he's a lesser crime boss. So our objectives then are... Mesa Beric betrayed you, so now it's time to make him pay. Break into his manor and steal the amethyst necklace Reputa gave him as a reward. Robin the Warden's territory and one of his new associates' manor will surely prove you are not one to be trifled with. Steal at least 2850 worth of valuables. A true professional doesn't leave a mess, don't kill anyone. Once you have accomplished your tasks, leave the market the way you came. Okay, there is also no loadout store for this mission. I wouldn't really need anything from it, even if it was here. The only thing I'm gonna use in this mission are rope arrows. So, let's make a real save and take a look at the map. So, this is not a very big mission. We start here near the stone market gate and we have a pretty straight shot to Barrack's castle, there is just one street going all the way there. We also have some estates and other establishments to loot along the way. So the Tyrell estate, public works building, and the Grimshaw estate are accessible, we can enter them. The Hammer Priory we can actually access from two points. From the rooftops we can get into the High Priest's bedroom, and from the sewers we can enter the cellar, but those two rooms are not connected within the Priory. And finally, the Tall Cameric and Sons building and Castle Spalding aren't accessible. So with the knowledge that the way to Barrick's castle is pretty straightforward and that I have to come back, I'm gonna take the Thieves Highway on my way there and the streets on my way back. This way I don't have to visit any place more than once and if you want all the loot in the mission, which I of course do, you have to go both high and low. So that's the most optimal way to approach this.
So I want to read a couple of posted notes first. I'm gonna reload after this. Yes, they are a little bit out of the way. Honest folk of Newmarket. It has come to the attention of the most honorable Lord Kernus, Burgomaster of Upper Newmarket, that a knave of most foul reputation and of dark appearance may prowl in our humble district to rob the honest men and steal from the rich. Let it be known that the Baron's police, the help of the Order of the Hammer in Newmarket, led by the most esteemed Father Rabot, shall do their best to catch this criminal. Thusly declared Lord Kernus, Burgomaster of Upper Newmarket. Honest citizens, be thou warned that the Order of the Hammer, present in Newmarket, shall from now on assist the Baron's police in its duty. Our borough must be cleansed of filth, and it is with this very purpose that the builder's servants shall always remain vigilant and smite the skulking thief, chastise the wild prostitute, and imprison the unruly criminal. Thusly signed and approved by His Eminence the High Priest's Markander, Father Rabot. Okay, so what I really want to do is just rope up the very first would be my C. Here are a few coin stacks for a total of 10, and that's not a safe place to hide, so you wanna get here. Because as you say, this guy turns around and he would spot you in that place. another rope arrow, I don't need that, but I will take this healing potion. Not gonna drink it, but I have a use for it. Here we can rope up to Tyrell Estate. And here is a bottle of wine and a gold goblet, total 85. That's gonna be my way uh, forward, but I wanna take a small detour first. So here it's kind of easy to take What's damage there? when you fall down. So what I recommend doing is aiming for that uh, railing. Who's there? Is someone there? Like this. <laughs> so that's Castle Spalding. And even though it's not accessible, you still want to follow the ledge here. Because there are some coin stacks on the window. Go 160. <laughs> and from this garden, we can rope up to the attic, quiet enough now. Tis well. which is actually a thieves' hideout. <clears throat> <laughs> so here we have a bunch of loot. We have a purse, two vases. Pair of spectacles and a tiara for a total of 610, and a thief's letter. Here's what I managed to swipe from Lord Wimple's manor near the Weeping Angel: a pair of upper spectacles, two gold vases, and a jeweled tiara. Your pay comes with the package. Of course, keep the items safe until we can fence them. Cutty may be interested, but I've heard Beric has managed to restart his operations, and he's in Arthur while Cutty isn't. Anyway, keeping an eye on them shouldn't be that hard, even for you. The tiara is real good quality, so don't lose it. Bentham. Always feels good to steal from other thieves. <laughs> and to get down here, I recommend roping this wood beam. And this way you can retrieve the arrow without taking damage. <laughs> I don't know if I'm safe here. Let's see. Nice, I guess I am. I know for a fact you are not safe in this shadow, but you are safe in this one. Here we have a gold hammer, total 685. And this would be the hammer priory, but of course you cannot access it this way. And it seems like it's a dead end. But if you want to, you could jump over to this roof. It's not slippery, so you can proceed this way. But I'm gonna show you a better way to do it. I'm gonna access it from the Tyrell estate. Came here. Oh, he turns around. Well, okay. 
I'm gonna wait for him to resume his patrol. There is a patch of shadow where you are safe. It's not all perfect shadow, but it's good enough to hide in. What there? Like this. Here we have a base, level 785, and a perfumed love letter. My most esteemed duchess, my heart pummels through my chest when I see your marvelous hair floating in the nightly breeze, like feathers slowly falling on the ground. And when I see your flawless silhouette against the bright light of your windows, I cannot help myself but fall madly in love with you. I would enjoy the pleasure of your company on a stroll someday. I know a wonderful Belvedere near Stone Market that has an incredible view on the city. I remain your most ardent admirer, Lord Joe and Grimshaw. <laughs> and here, the mistake I often make is jumping onto this, thinking it's carpet, but it's not. So you can alert the guard by doing that. And... Here is how you can jump over to this ledge. And if you follow it all the way to the end, you're gonna find the ring. Rattle of 885. And that's not the most difficult piece of loot in the mission to find. I'd probably say the second most difficult one, though. From here, I again recommend roping down. Because... <laughs> It's easy to take damage. Up next, we have some coin stacks on the window below. Hello, 915. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait for this guy and then follow him. Just to show you, we are basically halfway through the city at this point. We are currently stationed here, and we're about to access the public works building. Silver coin stacks, 939, and there is more to this building, but first I wanna enter Father Rabot's bedroom. At least I assume this is Father Rabot. So in here we have a bunch of stuff. Firstly, I'm gonna rope up here, get a couple of goblets, and then to get down you can just go down the rope, it's easy to retrieve from the floor. If you actually mantle up there, you can still get down safely by landing on the bed. Here's a hammerite key, which I'm gonna need later. A gold hammer, total 1044, and a ledger. Tomlinson, criminal and pagan heretic, escaped from the Builder's judgment until he drowned in the canal below Merkbull. Benjamin cleft Jolux, thieves pawn, died in righteous punishment. Marla, whore, thief, sent to Craxcliffe prison for detention. The Wall, crime overlord, sent to Kraskov prison for detention until his public execution. Is our shield that protects us from our squalid past. Knowledge is our weapon with which we carve a path to an enlightened future. Did something make a noise? So that's everything in here. And once again, this place looks like it's a dead end. But if you want to, you could hop over to this roof. It's not slippery. Then you can make it over to that gargoyle, which is even more difficult, and rope up to Barracks Castle. I'm not sure if this path was ever intended, but you can take it. I, however, will take a different one. Here we can flip a switch behind the bed, and it opens the grate in here. So when I go through it, 
I want to close it behind me, but there is no switch on this side. So even though it's not required for ghosting, it's only for Supreme that you're forced to actually close, unlock everything behind you, I still like to do it in my regular ghost runs. Even though I don't mind moving the crates out of the way, so I don't know, I'm strange like that. But I'm gonna use a trick I learned from Clotrimus. If you drop an item in front of a closing uh, sliding door, that will actually block it. And then when you pick it up, the door will close fully. So this only works on sliding doors, but it's still a really neat trick. <sighs> and that was my only use for the healing potion in this mission. There's a couple of places for a total of 11.44. And from here, we can access a rooftop with the sleeping thief. He's a bit of a light sleeper, so don't run here. He has some cash. 1171 and a cryptic letter. My lord, speak the eye, your most devoted spy. Been keeping an eye on Beric in the darks as my lord ordered I, but I regret to tell my lord that he has done nothing out of the ordinary. Been walking around in his home and getting more merchandises in Stone Market. Going to pursue my observations best as I can. Nothing seen about the Snixie my lord is looking for. Methinks he vanished in the darks. Deccan. Okay, so that would be the Grimshaw estate. And it's by far the most difficult building in the mission to approach. So let me show you my method of doing that. Firstly, I want to shoot a rope into the wood beam here. From somewhere I can get a foothold. <sighs> and then, what you want to do is take a running start and jump onto this rope. So, I don't know if it's Thieves' controls or if it's just my keyboard, but jumping off a sloped surface doesn't always work for me. So what I like to do is press my spacebar two or three times, so that way it does work. Cannot retrieve the rope arrow for now, but it's not a big deal. Here we have a gold goblet and a gold watch. And you are completely safe in the middle of this corridor. There's a line of perfect shadow. There's a gold base, 1271. My heart beats so hard. My heart pummels through the, my enamored duchess when I see a silhouette against the windows of your... <coughs> so, early drafts, I guess. So you're safe here, and you're also completely safe in the middle of this room. So to get out of here, I like shooting a rope arrow into this wood beam so you can <laughs> climb onto it and retrieve the rope arrow you should pro uh, shot previously, and then just jump over to the roof. <laughs> Not gonna take any damage. Oh well, don't know what it was. So this guy has a purse. Once he turns around, I'm gonna <clears throat> grab it. Go. 13, 12, uh, 21. And from here you can access a psychics shop. Is someone there? So in here we have a head, and a necklace, 1521, and a scroll. You're dead. So I'm not gonna lie, I actually got scared the first time I played this mission, and I thought that I would uh, come back to the game and there's gonna be a haunt standing next to me or that head would some somehow come alive and start attacking me, but no, it's just a scroll saying you're dead. 
So I assume it's this shopkeeper's security system, because he doesn't have any guards here and he cannot attack you, he's just gonna try to run away. So if I broke into a store and this was the first thing I saw, I wouldn't dare steal from it. And with that, we are basically done with the Thieves' Highway. So the only thing left to do is to take this walkway all the way to Barrick's Castle. So that's right across the Priory, where we entered Father Rebo's bedroom. <coughs> and I believe you are safe. Is someone yeah. there? You're safe in each of these patches of shadow. Nothing makes noise now. <laughs> so from here, you wanna first rope up and get a gold goblet. 1546. And then get inside. I didn't mean to do that. try it more carefully this time. Okay, so there are four ways inside Barrack Castle. This is one of them, and I'll show you all four. And this one deposits us you? in the top floor of the place. There is only one guard patrolling all too the way coffees this morning. I'm twitchy as hell. between the two ends See? of the floor. Here's a gold candlestick. Four vases. 1796. That's the way down to the first floor, we don't need to go there just yet, and we have a copy of the City Tribune here. Infamous crime lord De Wall arrested. De Wall, the well-known city warden, was arrested yesterday by the Baron's police with the help of the Order of the Hammer. The assault was personally led by Captain Pearsall, who told the Tribune, Today we celebrate a great victory. Thanks to our relentless efforts, we have triumphed over crime. The wall and his men were the plague of the city, and rest assured that every criminal will suffer the same fate as long as I'm in command. More on page 6. Gems of Sarnoth, cut in small pieces and found on the black market? Lord Solus, owner of the fabulous gems, discovered three months ago that his precious gems were gone when he came back from a banquet organized by vase collector Lord Randall in downtown. The case was so mysterious, it was dropped two days after the theft. But now a respectable diamond cutter from Upper Dark Smoke claims he has clearly identified small diamond fragments as being without a shadow of doubt the gems of Sarnath, cut in small pieces of the black market. More on page 9. And in here we have a bottle of wine and a fire poker. 1946. And you can hear the thief sleeping on the rooftop, so if you make noise here he's gonna hear that and wake up. And two rooms here, let's go into this one first. So if you're playing Supreme Ghost, this is, is your only unavoidable Supreme Bust. Picking a lock on this door alerts <laughs> Lady Beric. There's nothing you can do about that. She also turns around at random intervals, so she can be a little bit difficult to deal with. Two ways is there. 2046. But more importantly, we have a key here. That's the basement study key and an unfinished letter. Dear sister, I have received a secret letter and I must confess it made me glimpse hope again. I found a piece of parchment and a quill in my husband's study down in the basement. I had to steal a copy of the key from him while he was sleeping, but if he ever discovers I've done this and I've been writing to you, he will undoubtedly punish me. My days here between these dark walls are dull and moribund, and you know that my husband is a ruthless man. My younger dreams were shattered the day of our wedding, and I will never forgive father for this. William is a brute, and he has me confined in a small bedroom with no windows. I rarely see daylight, and this castle is so grim, it seems the very night haunts it with its presence. I can hear the walls whisper, I can hear them faintly shake as if there were rats in the walls, scurrying and running along the cracks. It may be because of this bleak atmosphere. I'm losing my mind here, if only I could be a child again. 
So I wanna drop this back. <coughs> and the basement study key is what you need to pick up on the top floor before you can do anything else. In this room, across the hall, we have a gold candlestick, three coin stacks, and I didn't mean to pick up that potion. And here we have a pickable door, which is the second way you can take to enter Barrack's castle. So this leads out to the balcony, and if you're taking the streets and not the Thieves' Highway, you can rope up here and enter it this way. So because you have to pick up that key, I would highly recommend taking either the way I took or this one. Because that's the most efficient way to approach it. <laughs> and here on the windowsill you can get a gold, uh, not gold, a regular goblet. 2160. So now we are done on the top floor and we can proceed down. to a small dining room below. Here we have a gold candlestick. Those doors aren't real doors, so the only way from here is to the kitchen. We have two goblets here. 20 to 40. And here is one of the places in the mission where the sound propagation doesn't work perfectly, so you barely hear that guard. And it can be don't know what it was. a little unfortunate if he's close to this exit, so you can just bump into him. But you can also use this to your advantage, and I'll show you how. So this would then I don't like the looks of this. be the basement study. And we have a bunch of stuff in here. Firstly, a pair of spectacles. Three diamonds. And a gold candlestick. 2640. This is the pedestal where I assume the necklace would have been found, but it's not here. Instead, we get the wine cellar key. And we have two readables. Messa Barrick, I want to personally thank you for your invaluable help. With that petty, independent thief Garrett out of the way, I currently have the best underguild network in the city, and I am most pleased to say it was all thanks to you. It is only a matter of time before my men find him, and if your information is accurate, it shouldn't take long. As a token of my gratitude, please accept this most formidable amethyst necklace I acquired from Cyric. I know you have a fondness for jewelry, so I'm sure this reward will please you, and I am of course eager to do business with you again. Reputo. And we have Barrick's Ledger. So some income and expenses here, and some notes. Received an amethyst necklace from Cyric as a gift offered by Lord Reputo. I hope his henchmen can handle that independent Thief Garrett, or whatever name he goes by these days. Sounds like the man has a talent for hiding like a coward. Also, where the hell did I put the second key to my study? I suspect someone might be stealing from the wine cellar. If it's down Winder, I gotta say, they got nerve. Three times have I heard noises coming from beyond the door, but of course my lazy house guards told me they didn't hear a thing. Guess I'll close that taffin door, keep the damn key with me, and tell Sinclair to watch for intruders. Can't be too cautious. I heard a strange noise when I was in my bedroom. I thought it was just the wind, but no, that was not it. It was a throbbing noise, but it was very faint, and I think it came from the necklace. Now this is a fine specimen. Could that magnificent piece of jewelry be magical? I have heard things about the objects in Roxburgh, but could they really exist? That fence, Victoria, I'm sure she knows something about it. I'm going to be keep it close to me. So this just confirms that Roxburgh is part of this universe. But what I want to discuss here, really, are the dates you can see. So, this mission 
takes place on the ninth month of the year 33, or 833. And the dates in between the different uh, releases in the Black Parade lore uh, missions aren't always consistent with each other. There could be some discrepancies, and we're gonna see one in the next mission, but it's still kind of interesting to try and put things into a greater context. For example, the sound of a berg uh, takes place during the fifth month of 833. You can learn that from the copy of the City Tribune. So this mission then takes place several months after that. Then, in the Dark Project, in uh, Lord Befford's manor, you can read his ledger and find out that that mission takes place during the third month of the year 34. So these events predate their Dark Project. And if you want to go even further, uh, you could compare this to, say, missions by Milan. He likes to set the events of all his missions in 832, so even before all this. And I want to discuss how mi the missions by Milan and a few other authors fit into the Black Parade lore, but that's a topic for another day. I'm gonna discuss it a few videos from now. So we're done here. And here's how you can use the sound propagation issues to your advantage. Because it doesn't work all that well, you can run on metal here, and that guard won't hear you. So here's the very bottom of the castle. That's the door we have to take to proceed, but first, let's see what's up here. This is the third way you can take to enter Barrick's castle. It's a pickable door from the streets at the very end of the street layout. So this is right between the Hammer Priory and that walkway we took. So I don't wanna go here just yet. I will have to visit that place later, because the Hammerite patrol in there has a purse. Next we have a sewer entrance. The sewer in this mission is... Uh, it's not very big, so it shouldn't take long to clear it out. But I wanna do it before I get into the wine cellar. Albert. Recent breaches in the upper, uh, upper Newmarket sewer system have been observed, and I currently don't know what's going on. Could be spiders or some taffa loitering about, so we gotta patrol the area and watch out for any intruders, especially since that guy living just there always tells the Public Works Division to repair the broken sewer hatch in his basement. Could be a potential risk, you see. Jeremy. So let me just show you what's... what... This is basically the end of the sewer. And you can get in here, from the streets, by picking this lock. Who goes there? Who said that? And this is right next to the start. So there is Tyrell Estate and Tolk American Sons building. So that would be the fourth way to get into Barrick's castle, and the last one. <coughs> or you can also hear a hammerite whistling, <sighs> and you can open the hatch here, and get into the cellar of the Hammer Priory. Two coin stacks here, <coughs> and this I assume would be the way to the Priory Hold. proper. Drop thy we oh man, <coughs> that scared me. And here is where you can use the Hammerite key. It opens this door. So you really have to visit uh, Father Rebo's office before you can come down here. Here we have four more coin stacks and two bottles of wine. Level 
So I'm gonna, gonna wait here until he stops. done with the sewer. So before dropping down into the water, wait until that guard is somewhere there. Because otherwise he would hear you. Okay, so now we can finally enter the wine cellar. Attention guards, the master suspects a thief might be stealing from the wine cellar, so you better keep an eye on that sewer hatch in this very room. Otherwise, I fear the master may not be as gentle as me. And don't you Tefers try to get inside, only he has the key, Captain Sinclair. And in here we have a bottle of wine, 2847, and the secret switch, which opens this. And I wanna close it behind me, straight away. So let's do this little maneuver. There we go. And here we have a Keeper Sanctuary. A notice. As ordered by Elde Ingvar, first Keeper of the New Market Sanctuary, all sentients must patrol and watch for intruders until further notice. The medallion of True Seen, the magical relic we thought was lost forever, has returned within our sacred halls, and it is our duty to keep it safe from reach. Access to the shrine is of course prohibited until we seal the artifact somewhere safe. Only superior keepers may enter. Access to the newly built New Market Sewer Access is prohibited for the time being. Please use either the nearby power station or the High Town Sewer System if you really must leave the sanctuary. Should any incident occur, report to Elder Ingvar immediately. So here you want to go right first, because there is a key there to pick up. Here we have a ring, 2947, and that checks off our loot goal. So the keepers in this mission use mage voices, and some of them use uh, thief models. Took me a little bit of time to get used to when I first played it, but <laughs> it gets the point across. Is this a, Is this a vision? The wind, the wind plays tricks with my senses. The gold candlestick, 2997. So here is a bit of a tricky place, because it's very well lit, this archway in its only way in, and there is a Something keeper standing there, so he can see there you easily. He doesn't always face this way, but even if he does, is this a vision? if you jump and land here, he won't have enough time to recognize you, and this area is completely safe. So next we're gonna get a bit of a difficult piece of loot. The gold nugget there. So let's see. I'm gonna jump, grab it, and jump back. You are safe on top of this bookshelf. What vision disturbs me? So once he turns All around, still. we can get down using the rope. Here, again, be a little bit careful. He has a purse, but he has to turn around, obviously. <coughs> or does he? Aha! Uh -huh. 3197. But he has to turn around for you to cross this area because it's lit. You are, however, safe in front of this door. So this is Elder Ingvar's chambers. I shall build shelters from the winds, feel the countless waters, see the vast earth. Again, you are lit as soon as you enter this room, so he has to be turned around. 
here are the two gold candlesticks, 3297. Here we have two readables. A revocation. Elder Ingvar. While I certainly congratulate you on retrieving the medallion of Trucine, I do not, however, approve of your careless methods. Our order was built with the purpose of remaining hidden and observed from afar, and by killing that man and stealing his possession, you destroy this very purpose. It is with immense grief that I have to from now on temporarily strip you of all your titles and privileges until your trial. Lastly signed, Second Keeper Theobald. So, he killed Mesa Beric then. And we have another parchment here. Work on the access to the old castle is complete, and we can now use it for moving around the city via the new market sewage system. The power station became too dangerous, and it leads right into our forbidden library. This way also allowed me to send the medallion of Trucine, and acquiring it will undoubtedly make me climb the hierarchy faster than through regular means. I must hide my true motives and stay focused. I really got lucky on this one. I knew the medallion was close, but the council urged me to build this access and now the medallion is almost ours. I know my disciples question me why the tunnel goes right into that wretched man's cellar, but I cannot answer them for now. They feel something is amiss. Well, that didn't work out for you now, did it? So here is also a useful piece of information. The power station leads into the Forbidden Library. So then you would assume that from the Forbidden Library you can access the power station, and we're gonna do that. And here is what you really need here. Keeper Shrine Key. are not at peace. It was nothing. There is a disturbance. Wind blows. So here, fire, nothing. if you move fast enough. What vision disturbs me? It was a false yeah. vision. You should be able to get out before he recognizes you. All is not still. Sweet silence returns. So now we can take the left path. And there are some keepers on the walkways above, but they shouldn't hear me down here. In the dining room we have a gold plate, a goblet, two gold candlesticks, 3472. And this would then be the shrine, where we can use the key. And there is one keeper patrolling inside. So here, you can kind of see a gas arrow up top, and in case you didn't know, you can rope up book textures. So that's how you can get it. And you can climb this whole structure if you want to, there is nothing up there except the gas arrow. You are also safe in the shadowy spots along the stairwell, but not all of them. And in here is what we are looking for. So there is a gas mine, so be careful, just grab it this way. It's the medallion of Trucine, which is actually Messer Barrick's Amethyst necklace. That checks off our main objective, and we're done here. So this guy, I don't think that's Ingvar. I think he has already left the sanctuary. It's just one of the elders. So now we just have to loot the rest of the sanctuary. There is a keeper who can come here, but I don't see him yet, so we can pick the lock. And this leads 
into a small library. The goblet, and if you climb this ladder, you can find a couple of coin stacks. 35, 32. And we have some books. Mysteries of the City, Volume 3. Treatise on Mages. Of the Analysis of the Trickster Slabs. Yenda Scriptures and Essays, Volume 1. The Seven Great Families, the Rutherfords. Of the Influence of the Builder and the Trickster. Reports from the Old Quarter Incident, Volume 6. That's a lot of reports. Finally, on the case of Azeron the Cruel. So that's everything from here. This is our way to proceed. So I just want to clear out the other side first. And both keepers who patrol these sides have purses on them. So I picked one. Let's get these guys as well. Was a false vision. Something, Something is amiss. 3575. And here is the most difficult piece of loot in the mission to find. You can barely see it. It's the diamond behind the statue. 3675. And the keeper who patrols this site doesn't come into this dormitory, so you are safe. In this footlocker is another piece of loot. A ring, 37.75. So this is the Forbidden the Library, are not at peace. mentioned in Ingvar's notes. The wind has deceived me. First of all, a pair of spectacles, 38, 25, and then we can rope up the rafter here. <laughs> and access the power station. Just as he said. So this is... Uh, this works only as a way out of the sanctuary, obviously. You cannot access it this way. Flip this, and we're back in the city. Is that you? In this room is a purse. 3885. <coughs> huh? And we emerge right across the balcony of Beric's castle and near Grimshire Estate. So getting down here can be a little tricky. The best method I found is to plant a rope over there and just climb down this way. I was kind of exposed here. Did he see me? Nope. Okay. So all that's left to do is to get back to the starting area using the streets and pick a few purses of the patrolling guards. So this guy patrols the entire city. He goes all the way to the very last courtyard there and to the starting area. So he has a purse. In the courtyard, as I said earlier, the Hammerite has a purse. Must have been rats. Uh, Do my eyes show me her right? Thirty-nine seventy-five, and we have one last purse to pick on a guy in the starting area. Seems, Seems peaceful enough now. now. Oh well. <coughs> so to cross here, we have a perfect shadow right in front of that guard. This would then be the psychic's shop with an ominous note. And that's the way to the sewers. So we're almost near the start.
Did that shadow move? So that's the guy See anything now. who has the last purse. <coughs> Over there. Oh well. Must have been <coughs> Okay, this area is well lit, so I guess I'm gonna have to wait for him again. But yeah, that was the last purse, the last pickpocket, and the last piece of loot in the mission. So we have 4,000 loot. That's the max we can get. Hey, what was that? Hmm. Nothing there now. What's going on over there? Just the wind, I guess. Okay, so you have to get straight in here to end the mission. Okay, good. So, mission complete. In 32 minutes and 15 seconds, we have found all the loot, 4000, we have picked all 7 pickpockets, and we have picked 5 locks. If you're trying to limit the number of locks picked, you can do this mission with 4. The only unnecessary one I did was the balcony door of Barrick's castle. So, great, great. Not a very big mission, but enjoyable one and rich on lore. So thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time for Endless Rain. Have a good day, and bye-bye for now.